Welcome back to our Pikmin 2! Last time, we returned to the planet of the Pikmin in search of treasure, so this time, we're continuing to explore the Valley of Repose. Good morning, workers! Ready for another day of toiling for the profit of your company? The Pikmin seem to still be asleep inside their onion. What lazy creatures! No wonder they lack survival skills. Stand beneath the onion and press A to call them out. We're still kind of in the tutorial phase of the game, but day two is the first day where things can actually go wrong. So we have a time limit now. Like in Pikmin 1, it's roughly 13 minutes in real time, and the Pikmin can actually die. So we have to be very careful when fighting enemies, and we do have a few enemies to fight. Um, first of all, we have another paper bag, and we need to weigh this down. So this one takes a whopping 35 Pikmin to weigh down, uh, so we need to actually grow our numbers a little bit first. Um, there are luckily quite a few pellets around this uh, starting area, so we will be able to reach those numbers relatively quickly, and then uh, we'll have to see what's beyond uh, this area. Uh, back where Louie was, some of the pellets have also grown back, um, so yeah, this is actually kind of a nice relaxing day uh, for the start. Uh, you can basically just uh, get more Pikmin and take your time. Uh, even though 13 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, there's actually not a lot to be done on this day, so we don't need to rush necessarily. Um, with that, we should be getting close to uh, 35 Pikmin, uh, since the red pellet is almost back. That should be enough to weigh this down, uh, but I still might wait for the other Pikmin to come back, uh, because we need all of the Pikmin we can get. Um, something very scary is actually coming up. Um, in a lot of ways, this day is actually a lot more chill than Pikmin 1's day 2, uh, like the Forest of Hope. Uh, is actually kind of overwhelming at first because of the amount of enemies and trying to like um, get through everything you need to do uh, with a time limit and a limited number of days. Um, this day on the other hand, uh, we actually don't have to worry about uh, running out of uh, air. Uh, we can spend as much time on the planet as we need to to collect the treasure we need. Uh, so yeah, we don't need to worry about uh, running out of days, so the time limit is a little bit less um, scary compared to Pikmin 1. Uh, there's also another gameplay change that also makes the uh, time limit a little bit less um, impactful uh, that we'll actually be seeing a little bit later today. Um, so yeah, in general, Pikmin 2 is slightly divisive because of its changes to the formula uh, that Pikmin 1 established uh, by kind of trivializing some of the strategy elements uh, by making a lot of the time elements less uh, stressful. Um, but the game definitely makes up for that in other ways in terms of stress, uh, and we'll, we'll be seeing that much later. Uh, for now, we have 47 red Pikmin, uh, which should be enough to weigh this down, and um, it should be enough to uh, get us through the next few battles that we'll have to fight. Uh, so there's a red uh, dwarf ball borb. Um, so let's actually start out by swarming, uh, since we actually didn't really get a chance to show this off last time. Uh, but in this game, with the adult ball borbs, swarming is a lot less efficient. Throwing is actually better, uh, partly because the throw speed is a lot faster, uh, especially if you're good at button mashing. Uh, you can throw Pikmin really fast compared to in Pikmin 1. Um, I do find button mashing kind of clunky in this version, uh, because of the cursor moving around from the input. Uh, but beyond that, overall this isn't too scary. I actually have lost Pikmin to this ball borb in the past, um, so I am glad that things went relatively smooth there. Uh, this takes uh, a lot of Pikmin, uh, so instead of worrying about that for now, um, 
I am going to carry back these spoils, build up our numbers even more, and also we have a very familiar looking obstacle up ahead. Um, over here we have a wall. So like before, uh, the Pikmin can actually tear down uh, these little walls. We also have like a cave entrance in the background. Uh, we'll be exploring that later on. Um, but we'll leave a few Pikmin to tear down the wall and the rest will carry everything back. Once we get our numbers up over here, uh, then these Pikmin will help carry the next treasure back. Um, so yeah, it is kind of a, a, a second tutorial day in essence. Um, like, yeah, there is the risk of losing Pikmin to the Bulb Orb, uh, but in general, it's a lot more low risk than, yeah, even the Forest of Hope, uh, the first time through that area. Um, though part of it's my fault, because with the Forest of Hope, I tried to do way too much in one day, like collecting, like, three ship parts, uh, collecting the, the yellow Pikmin and everything, uh, well, in this case, um, you're kind of deliberately limited in how much you can actually do, uh, which in some ways is nice as a tutorial, and also slightly frustrating as someone who actually kind of wishes I could do more in the first day. Um, like, at this point, uh, Pikmin 2 is still relatively linear until we get past uh, this day. Um, so yeah, then the game will start to open up a little bit later, uh, but yeah, for now this is still very much in tutorial mode. Um, but again, it's almost deceptively easy with how difficult this game, the game actually gets later on. Uh, you'd think it actually might be less stressful, and yet this game manages to be more stressful than Pikmin 1 in a lot of regards. Um, so yeah, let's move the remaining Pikmin uh, to the wall to help tear this down a little bit faster. Uh, they'll carry this back, but again, we're kind of waiting for two separate timers. Uh, so even though like we are on a time limit, we are kind of limited by the speed that the Pikmin can actually work. Um, which is both frustrating at times and also the fun of Pikmin, uh, trying to actually balance everything out uh, in the most efficient manner possible. It's why I like these games. This was... How could Pikmin destroy such a massive wall? When masked, their might is ferocious. Louis, did Olimar instruct you on proper Pikmin commanding protocol? Apparently not. Olimar, you are failing in your duty as a superior. Allow me to explain. Press A to grab Pikmin and release to throw them. Call them into a group with B. Press C to disband the group, point at the screen, and press down on the D-pad to issue orders. Press down on the D-pad to swarm Pikmin on treasure and enemies, or make them march in a line. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting them to take down the wall that quickly, and as a result I have completely lost my train of thought of what I was talking about. Um, so yeah, uh, all that's left is to carry this back and then see what's behind that wall. But again, you're kind of limited by how much you can actually do on this day. Again, it almost is deceptively easy with how difficult the rest of the game gets. Uh, I, I think that's what I was talking about before the uh, cutscene started. Um, Alright, so let's carry this back and then uh, regroup and see what else we, we can find here. Our next treasure is worth 170 Pokos, and is named Other Scrap. So with 70 Pikmin and half of the day left, uh, let's head over to that uh, cave entrance in the distance and see, see what we can find here. Other than that, uh, there's actually nothing else we can do. Uh, there's water over here, there's a wall also. Um, so yeah, there's nothing we can actually do over here. Uh, so the only way forward is through this cave. Interesting. Warm air is welling up from the hole in the ground before you. What could lie underground? What is wrong? You both show expressions of unease. Do not fear, the leader's group of Pikmin will join you. 
I shall dispatch my research pod too. Approach the hole and press A to jump in. So this is the Emergence Cave. Intriguing. My heat sensors indicate that this hole's interior is warmer than on the surface. An analysis suggests danger lies ahead, but the promise of treasure is tantalizing. If you wish to check underground terrain, press plus to communicate with me. I am not just a ship, I am an all-purpose support pod. This is the most divisive aspect of Pikmin 2, the underground sublevels. So there is no time limit here, you can take all the time you need, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of the time management aspects of Pikmin, uh, which is part of the reason why they're so divisive. There's all other reasons too, uh, we'll get to that uh, in the future. Um, yeah, it's a very different spin on Pikmin gameplay, like there is so, still some strategic um, planning for some things uh, later on. This floor is relatively straightforward, so there's nothing really to see here. Um, but in general, it does feel like it's sort of contrary to the design philosophy of the rest of the series, if that makes sense. So I get why they're very divisive. Again, I, I actually am kind of okay with these. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. I think part of it is actually nostalgia, in all fairness. We have a 7-up uh, bottle cap, uh, the quenching emblem, worth 100 pokos. And we have another treasure on the way. Worth 180 pokos, we have the citrus slump. I do feel like the names add a lot to this, to be honest. Um, but also, we have another hole over here. This hole appears to be quite deep. My sensors indicate more treacherous terrain ahead. Louis, you do recall that you can adjust the camera with Z and up, left, and right on the D-pad, correct? Your expression suggests you do. Excellent. Don't worry, all your Pikmin will follow you. Approach the hole and press A to enter. It. Another thing that's very interesting about these sublevels is all Pikmin on the floor will join you once you leave, so they don't even have to be in either captain's party. Uh, you can basically walk all the way by yourself and still have all your Pikmin when you're ready to go. So floor 2 is the end of the line for this cave. Uh, overall, this isn't a very difficult uh, area to traverse, uh, but it's mostly designed as a bit of a tutorial. Uh, we have a treasure right over here that's very interesting.
it's inconceivable that such an immense object has been, been buried here for so long. The, the, the design on the outer shell resembles the surface of the planet as seen from space. Perhaps this can be used for something other than salvage. But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even 100 red Pikmin will be unable to lift it. To confirm the ship's suspicions, we need 101 Pikmin. So, even if you w went back to the above ground, and basically got more Pikmin, um, there is a problem where you can only have 100 Pikmin on the field. So uh, this is literally impossible to carry with red Pikmin alone. By the way, you can also carry back the um, enemies to the ship uh, pod, uh, and they are worth a few Pokos. Uh, if you're wondering, I'm going to deliberately not do that because I have a very specific route planned out uh, for finding treasures. Um, and I'm afraid if I collect too many and change the count of Pokos I have by the end of a specific dungeon, it'll basically mess me up uh, later on. Um, so if you're wondering why I'm not collecting uh, the enemies here, that's why. Just to avoid throwing off my Poco count uh, for something late, uh, later in the game. Uh, but that is an option if you want like a really high score uh, to collect all of the enemies that you see. Um, but with that, uh, we still need to find a way to pick up this uh, treasure. Uh, so let's head uh, deeper into this cave. Astounding! A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snowy landscape. Clearly is warmer down here than above. Look, the Pikmin are restless. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. So these are candy pop buds, which we did see in Pikmin 1, uh, but we never saw purple ones. Uh, so let's toss Pikmin, they take a maximum of 5 Pikmin, and basically turn them into a different uh, type of Pikmin. So uh, we have a very unique type of Pikmin now uh, that was not in the original. Amazing! A purple Pikmin! It has hair and is quite stocky. It seems very heavy and strong. This kind of Pikmin was not mentioned in your report, Olimar. It must be an entirely new type. Transforming Pikmin by tossing them into flowers? Intriguing. Perhaps there are others? So we now have purple Pikmin, uh, 10 to be precise, uh, which is very helpful for reasons. Um, basically, they have s several downsides, like they're a little bit slower than the red Pikmin, so they have a little bit of a harder time keeping up. Uh, also one good thing in Pikmin 2 is the AI is generally more responsive. Um, so they don't fall behind as much. It can still happen, especially with the purple Pikmin, uh, but in general they don't fall behind uh, nearly as badly as the Pikmin in the first game. Um, but also, whenever you toss a purple Pikmin, uh, they make a much... Um, they basically land with like a huge thud, um, which like shakes the screen and everything, uh, which means they're a little bit uh, heavier and better for combat, uh, but also they have the carry weight or carry capacity of 10 red Pikmin. So we can finally carry this globe back to the ship pod. Uh, in the meantime, let's head a little bit deeper into the cave and see if we can find anything else at the back corner. Looks like there's a geyser, so let's investigate this next. Astounding! Water is shooting out of this geyser with incredible force! 
Sensors indicate it has enough power to launch you into the air. Approach it and press A to try. So that's our ticket out of here, but first we have to wait for them to carry this treasure back to the ship. Worth 200 Pokos, we have the Spherical Atlas. There is a device resembling a microchip embedded inside the sphere, retrieving data. Error, I could only decode a portion of the data, but I did retrieve new geographic charts. I will input this data into my planetary database and name it the sphere chart. Press plus to contact me and go to the exploration kit on the radar screen by pressing left on the D-pad. Now that we have this new data, you should explore the decoded territory tomorrow. And like before, we actually don't need to care uh, to take all the Pikmin to the exit, uh, so all we have to do is swap over to Olimar and... Uh, Use the geyser. And with that, we found all three treasures in the Emergence Cave, and didn't lose any Pikmin in the process. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's an easter egg, at least in the GameCube version, where if you wait on the screen long enough, um, a recurring theme by series composer Kazumi Totaka will actually play. It's a very iconic theme called Totaka's Song that he tends to sneak into his games. I actually don't know if it's in the Wii version, I'll double check that uh, before the next uh, day. You have successfully returned to the planet's surface. Excellent decision-making, gentlemen. We must celebrate your first successful spelunking expedition. You've gathered a large amount of data that needs in-depth analysis. I shall send a report back to the president tonight, detailing your progress. Olimar and Louie, since you will explore a new area tomorrow, your today's work is done. What? You still want to work? Unacceptable. You may not realize it, but you are exhausted. You should take a much-needed rest, as you have all the time you need to collect treasure. Haste makes waste, so take it slow and steady. So today's report is a little bit more exciting, with four treasures found, and over 500 Pokos uh, earned.
We also have purple Pikmin now, and we have a grand total of 70 Pikmin and still no casualties. Baby steps first, Olimar. Plan well and don't worry about me. Our debt is with happy Hokotate savings and loan. After all, besides, there's nothing left to repossess, so ha! One thing I do want to quickly mention is if you don't collect the Spherical Atlas, you can actually leave the cave and uh, continue exploring for the day. But again, there's nothing else left. Um, hypothetically though, you can actually go through the Emergence Cave a second time uh, to collect 10 more Purple Pikmin, but it actually doesn't help you because um, it actually removes Purple Candy Pop Buds from a different um, cave. So it doesn't really speed up your progress at all in terms of collecting purple Pikmin for later. Uh, I just wanted to mention that really quickly. Uh, but with that being said, we have a new area to explore, the Awakening Wood. So we'll be heading there next time to see what we can find. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Pikmin 2.